Welcome back to another episode of Frames TM and today I'm going to take you through my humble studio setup. Today we are going to explore six key components that bring my content creation process to life. So let's dive right in. For me there are six critical components to the process. Number one, it's about choosing the right space. Whether it's a cozy corner in your bedroom or a dedicated room for uh, for YouTube studio, you have to make sure that that space is comfortable to you, has adequate space and is relatively undisturbed by whatever is happening around you. The second most important thing for me is the camera, the camera you choose because that allows for a lot of flexibility. Okay. The ease of shooting, the ease of editing, the kind of colors you get, all of those things, just the general comfort level, all of those things depends on your main gear, which is the camera. So let me introduce you to the star of the show, the Nikon Z30. Now this fantastic little camera has become an important component of my studio with its compact size, amazing straight out of the camera image quality, color, skin tone, very, very impressive 4K capabilities and user friendly interface. The Nikon Z30 can be a very, very good companion, almost the ultimate companion for any aspiring creator, to be honest, whether you're vlogging outside or actually using it as part of your studio inside. It's perfect for all situations. It's simple and easy to set up. It's great for live streaming. It can be used on any tripod because it's so light. Use the Z30 on a cheap tripod. You don't need a very sturdy tripod that can have that can carry uh, a 20 kg, kg or 20 kilo camera and lens combination it is so light almost the cheapest tripod can take it the third thing that you look into is the lens options that we have in front of us in this case the nikon z30 we'll have to look at the lens depending on how the studio is set up the kind of depth you have the kind of distance you have from the camera all of those things matter whether you're using a teleprompter or not those things matter those things sort of help you decide what sort of um, focal length you want to use when it comes to the lenses and therefore what kind of lens options you have so that's a very um, important thing to talk about okay and then we'll move to lighting setup no no because you can have a great camera but the camera needs to be aided with good light sources whether it's natural light or artificial light you should be able to augment the capability of, of the camera with how you use lights and how many lights you use look lighting you can it can be an endless journey how you use lights like you can use 10 lights or two lights or one light or just the window light so we'll also look at that look at how i have used um the z30 in combination with the lenses and in combination with the lights and lastly but not the least i'll talk about using a variable nd filter it's very handy it's very handy very important again to control the kind of light you have and to control the light spillover and to control the look saturation all of those things let's begin i wanted a long room so that there is more depth of feel i'll explain this later but i decided that this is going to be my space and i started setting this up so once i identify the space all i needed to do is to understand how to use this space in any condition. Creating a studio in front of a large window is really useful. All I need to do is just open the curtains, start shooting. What can you do if you have access to natural light? Let me show you. So frankly, I was looking for a camera that is absolutely gorgeous in natural light, or in fact, in any kind of light. 
I wanted a camera that produces fantastic skin tone and I don't have to do a lot of editing. YouTube production, it takes a lot of time. What you need is efficiency. So I need a camera which is easy, simple to set up and something that works flawlessly in any condition, no matter the lighting. You should have very good ISO performance. You should very have very good color and skin tone right out of the camera. And that's how I zeroed it on the Z30. Really, I haven't really done anything. There's no treatment, just the natural light. So my criteria for choosing the camera is that it needs to be simple to use. It needs to have very good color output and very accurate color output. So I'll just click on the eye menu here and then this interface comes up. The first thing I do is go and choose my picture profile. I always choose standard because it gives such natural skin tone and then I go inside. Don't change brightness, don't change saturation, hue, all of these are fine. So the things I change is I reduce contrast so that the picture is smoother. I reduce mid-range sharpening, sharpening overall, quick sharp. I reduce all of these things I, and I push them towards softer. Okay. And then I say, okay, this picture is amazing. Then I go to 4K 30. The Z30 has amazing 4K uh, quality coming out of this camera. So straight out of camera, this is great. Remember to set your camera to AFF for video. That's very crucial. Don't go to AFC. For photography, AFC is great, but for video, you should uh, keep it to full-time autofocus. That's AFF, all right? And then what do you do? Go to the AF area mode and choose, choose auto area AF people so that it tracks the eye, all right? So now you're set. Also, you can use active delighting. I typically turn it off. Switch off vibration reduction because otherwise the camera is going to assume that there is movement and you're going to see distortion in the picture. On a tripod, you don't need vibration reduction. Uh, switch it off. Okay, now let's see what I get. I get a fantastic image here. I get really good picture quality. There's nothing that I had to do, really. She's looking beautiful there. She's looking, I mean, she's just, she is beautiful. <laughs> And she is looking beautiful because of how the Z30 works, because of the natural, beautiful, vibrant colors of the Z30. I also need to choose a camera that has got very good lens options. Depending on the length of this room, I realized that this requires uh, a 35 mm focal length lens on a full frame body, which means on a crop body, this should be about 23, 24. There are many more options. I'm going to show you the options. You can use this Viltrox lens 23 f 1.4. That's an amazing lens. Then you have the 24mm 1.8 F mount lens, 24mm F 1.8 Z mount lens. Now I actually want to show you how you can use a much cheaper lens and still get a very similar result. Now this is the 28mm 2.8. This is the 28mm 2.8, okay? This is a much more affordable lens, but look how beautifully this works. This is like $200 or maybe less than that or maybe slightly higher than you get almost a 40 mm uh, focal length 40 42 mm focal length on a crop body this is actually a full frame lens so if you buy a full frame camera later on this is fantastic you can use it on your z30 you can use it on any camera on the z mount i have that as a key light and that's pretty close now this key light can help me control light in a tremendous way let me show you how it works now you see her face is beautifully exposed, but the background is a little darker. So there's a little bit more uh, difference between the exposure on her face and the exposure behind her in the background. Now let me show you how we can increase the output from your Z30. Now I'm going to just pull the curtain, okay? So I'm going to sort of simulate a night scene. Now see, there's only one key light. You actually get a very good looking image even now right now the light is good but it's a bit too harsh there's too much shadow on her left side I have placed another light here and immediately you see that side of a cheek is is now lit that's looking much better you can do more of the background there's a bit of lack of balance so I would like to have something on the right maybe so what I have here 
is another light. Um, this is a Godox light. This already is beautiful. I want something contrasting in the background as well. So what I'd like to have is blue light in the background. So I have placed this. The look right now, there is so much more contrast. It, it's, it's suddenly a notch higher. But this is already so good. But I want a kick light, you know, the light that comes from the background and sort of adds a bit of interest to the hair. Now that's the difference. Suddenly you see the side lights are adding that outline on her hair. As you can see, I'm right now shooting at 160. The shutter speed is too high. There is not going to be natural sort of natural looking movement if I'm shooting at such high shutter speed. So what I want is I want a little I want to bring it down to 50. Now we'll start seeing natural movement. But the problem is it's overexposed because this light is powerful. I have light from here, I have light from here, I have a light coming from the side, then there is light reflected off the wall because this, this is a white uh, painted room, all right? So I need to cut the light. So I need to make this lens wear a sunglass. How do I do that? I have this ND filter, all right? This is the ND filter. This is the ND filter. All right, so just take this and put it in front of the camera. And even if I increase the ISO to 200 to even 400, it's fine. So I have so much control over the lighting right now. And this is my YouTube studio. This is how it looks. I have gone from a very simplistic way of setting up a studio to a fairly complex sort of studio, which is great for both. Uh, with artificial light and with natural light. So let me know what you think and let me know how, what you think about the production quality of coming out of the Z30 and the lenses that you saw. See you very soon with another one.